Let's talk Blackstone because another big earnings report coming out from that firm today, the private equity giant beating analyst profit expectations in the fourth quarter. Total segment revenue was roughly in line with estimates. Blackstone also declaring a dividend of 94 cents a share. Joining us right now uh, on the quarter, John Gray he is, of course, Blackstone's president and chief operating officer. Good morning to you. Good morning, Andrew. We had a really great quarter. We're excited. Well, you, you, by the way, the stock is up about 3%. So let's talk about the quarter, and then I want to get into uh, what you're seeing in terms of the portfolio and what it means for the larger economy, and then maybe we'll talk a little real estate as well. But in, in terms of what drove of the quarter this, the, the, um, these last three months? Well, what happened here was we had our best quarter in terms of distributable earnings, in terms of investment activity and fundraising. And I think the key thing is we're really facing a regime change for the economy. For the last two years, we've been enduring this high cost of capital as the Fed tightened in order to drive down inflation. Now inflation is coming down, and we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Rates are going to be coming down in 24, and you begin to get this virtuous cycle. You begin to see M&A activity pick up equity markets open up, debt cost of capital comes down, and all of that is good for our business and, more importantly, good for our investors. And so we're excited about that reacceleration, but we're also very proud of the resilience we showed during the tough last two years, the way we delivered for our customers, particularly performance. In terms of performance, let me ask you this. You got, as you said, um, you know, Best, best inflows uh, since, you know, it, it, it's, it's a remarkable thing. Just look at, you know, third best in history. At some point, do you think that size is the enemy of performance? We really haven't found that over time. Um, the key for us in private markets is the ability to do things at scale, the ability to show up and to do very large transactions. You know, we announced uh, big deals in real estate in this last quarter, $17 billion mortgage portfolio in partnership with the FDIC on Signature. We partnered with some other firms on a $14 billion privatization of a European company at Avinta. We've been able to write very large checks on the credit side to help borrowers. That ability to move at scale and size has always been an advantage for us. And then I think a really another important advantage for us is information the ability to see what's happening around the world, what's happening in different markets, different sectors, all of that is really helpful. That's a key competitive advantage. So for us, we think size is a driving force for our performance. We're going to continue with that as we grow. So when you say that you're going to see more transactions, that you see M&A activity accelerating, is that accelerating because, and I think Steve uh, Schwartzman, your founder, uh, talked a little bit about this, that there could be more distress sales that, that, could, that could create some of this. It's, it's not going to necessarily come from strength, per se, right? I think it's a combination. Uh, in some sectors like real estate, there is some more pressure. You'll see it there. In certain sectors, there are needs for liquidity. Pension funds may want to sell interest in funds. But part of this is just the natural M&A cycle. If you look back over time, we've had a two-year decline of about 50% in M&A volumes falling. We had a similar dynamic in 08, 09, similar in the early 90s. And there are just people who own businesses who want to sell, companies who want to sell non-core divisions, private equity firms who want liquidity for their investors. It's almost like a flotation device below the water. It's got to come up. And as market conditions get better, you see that M&A volume return. So there'll be some distressed transactions but also, I just think it's the natural order of things. What, what's the, uh, the House view of where the Fed is going to be over the next year and what that's going to mean for your ability to leverage investments? You know, I think the Fed has a lot of air cover to cover rates, to lower rates. Uh, we've seen inflation coming down in our portfolio. We see it in input costs. We see wage pressures easing. We poll our CEOs. It's much easier to hire today than it was 12 months ago, 24 months ago. We see pressure on rents. So the CPI data, we think, will continue to be positive for the Fed. I think what goes the other way is concerns about reigniting inflation, what happened in the 1970s. So I think they will cut rates. 
Will it be as fast or as deep as the market would hope? Maybe not. But the direction of travel, I think, on short rates is lower, and that's very positive for markets. What, what does that mean, though, for valuations? You know, the, the private market keys oftentimes or all the time off of the public market. Some people say a little, sometimes a little lag. Yeah, I think when you lower the cost of capital, that's helpful. And it's not just helpful in terms of discount rates. It provides confidence to the market. You've seen spreads come in across the fixed income universe here over the last 90 days. As markets anticipate looser financial conditions, it adds to buoyancy. It's supportive of valuations. It doesn't mean in some sectors things haven't moved pretty quickly. But I would say overall, I would say a lower rate environment is helpful for the economy. The only thing that cuts the other way is if the Fed stays tight, you know, for an extended period of time here, we could see more of a sequential slowdown. What we've seen in our businesses, certainly in the fourth quarter, was strong revenue growth, 7 percent. We've seen very limited defaults across our companies in terms of borrowers that we're lending to. But I think the risk here is that the Fed stays very tight, extended period of time, you get a slowdown. Overall, I think it's a positive, though, for valuations where we sit.